Okay, first of all, I'm just gonna sort of calm down the hype that this title has caused, okay? This game, alright, let's not get ahead of ourselves. This game does have the potential to be the best F1 game ever, but there's still a lot of work. There's still a lot of things that need to happen before it is. Okay, so today, I'm going to be going over F1 2016, because I haven't really done a video on F1 2016, discussing the features, giving my opinions on them, and I'm just going to give, like, a balanced positives and negatives, okay? Here's how it looks, but also, this could be wrong with it, this could go well, this sort of thing, to give a balanced conclusion in the end as to whether this could actually be the best F1 game that we've had. There's been a lot of features announced, a lot of game modes and all that sort of stuff. It's looking good, it's coming together nicely, but we've you know, it, there's still a long way to go. We don't want to overhype it completely. We overhyped F1 2015 and it ended up being dead. You know, I know I know this title has created hype, Niran, you're being, you, you, you're being an idiot. But I, I know, I realise that. But in this actual video, I want to just give a balanced opinion and all that from my, from my perspective as to whether this game could actually be the best F1 game ever. Now, the career mode that was announced does seem to have, you know, good potential to be one that has good longevity as well. On F1 2015 we had championship mode and pro season mode, basically a one season thing and it didn't really work. It had no longevity at all. It was very one dimensional. Nothing off the track, literally just on the track, do a race, then another race, then another race until the season's over. Um, the career mode that obviously Codemasters announced for F1 2016 is a 10 season career mode. Um, you know, you and you get to personalize your helmet, personalize your avatar, so how they look on the podium, uh, and also uh, the number as well that you can use. That was something that obviously wasn't on F1 2015. Um, so you can have any number and it'll appear in the font uh, on the correct car. So if you ha if you drive for Toro Rosso and you choose like number 76, it'll come up uh, in the Toro Rosso font. It won't just be a stock number. Um, on top of that, obviously, we've now got the hospitality area, the paddock, basically very reminiscent of F1 2010, and also agents and R and D. Now, that was obviously something you didn't have. The car couldn't improve on F1 2015. We've gone back to R and D, so development on the cars, and that actually progresses across all 10 seasons. So if you drive for the same team over the 10 seasons, you can basically take Manor to being the best team in Formula 1 through R&D by the end of the 10 seasons. Now, there are a few things that I would sort of question. I mean, it does it does sound very, very good. I couldn't, I, honestly, I wouldn't say there's any negatives to this so far. The fact that you can interact with people, aka your agents and your R&D engineer as well. The fact that you can earn uh, upgrades and updates based on performances on the racetrack, in qualifying, in practice, it actually rewards you for hitting your objectives, which is something that hasn't really um, been present in games before, you know, it's it's actually rewarding you for, for doing well and taking part and actually putting your all into the career mode. So from that perspective, it's fantastic and it's probably going to have the longevity. What I would say though, uh, one question that I would raise, it's not necessarily a negative or positive, but can certain teams become better than others without your input? If I don't drive for mana ever within the career mode, could they still rise up and become the best team by the end? Is there a certain limit to how good a team can become? Uh, obviously you have a situation where uh, certain teams have bars of R&D, so the higher or the, the further down the bar you are, the better the car is. Does every team eventually get to the end of that bar? Do we, do we end up after like six seasons with every team being of equal performance? That isn't necessarily a negative, but um, it might be that eventually every single career mode is the same because then you've got every team being of an equal performance because they can't actually improve anymore. I'm guessing that wouldn't be something that's in the game necessarily, but you may see it on a small scale. What I would love to see is something as a situation where every single career mode is different, depending on who you are. You know, uh, Sauber could be really good in someone's career mode, but also then could be the worst team in someone else's. It just completely depends. Hopefully that isn't scripted. That's one thing I would say. The other main thing that was announced uh, about a month ago was the safety car and virtual safety car. Obviously that's fantastic. It's been brought back we don't really know why it wasn't in F1 2015, though I assume there was a, a genuine reason for that, obviously. Um, but it's great to see it back. It looks rendered really nicely. It looks beautiful, especially in the rain, uh, as well as the safety car. And it's great to see the virtual safety car as well, adding some more realism. You know, it's in Formula 1 in real life. It's great to see it in Formula 1 on the game as well. The one concern that I, that I would have, the main concern about this, is how the AI perform 
under the virtual safety car? Do they really, do they stick to the delta times? Do, are they going to get penalties left, right and centre because they're not programmed properly? That is one thing that I would be concerned about. It's great to have it in the game. Hopefully, uh, Codemasters have got that right. I wouldn't see them, especially after the disaster that was F1 2015, implementing stuff into the game that doesn't work correctly. If they don't think the virtual safety car is going to work, there's no need to bring it back. You know, just have the normal safety car. People wouldn't be massively concerned if the virtual safety car was omitted. So clearly they have the confidence uh, that they've got it right, but hopefully, because that would that would ruin races massively if the AI didn't perform properly under the virtual safety car. And will the AI be more like real life drivers under the, under the actual safety car, like the proper physical safety car? Will they be more bunched together? Will they weave around? Because on previous Codemasters games, uh, the AI were very spread out under the safety car, and it actually lost you a lot of time in comparison to rivals, uh, because they were just so spaced out, and you could easily get close to them, but they would never get close to each other. Uh, we talked about customization in career mode, the likes of avatars, full customization of helmets and pos uh, personal numbers. Another small thing that was announced was pit boards as well. That would indicate that we're going to get pro season mode again because obviously then you can have the HUD off and you can rely on your steering wheel and also the pit boards as well. That's pretty good. I can't see any negatives with that or any questions that I would like to raise, to be honest. They seem like good additions. Uh, aesthetically, it's going to look a lot more realistic and it's going to look better. So I have no qualms with that. Maybe the possibility of getting some cool cinematic. Uh, with that as well. And then finally when it comes to the stuff that was announced about a month ago, we've got a daytime editor which aesthetically looks really good. The sunset and the lens flares that come with that look really nice. You can obviously do Singapore in the daytime now, I think you can do Bahrain in the daytime I would imagine uh, as well. Same for Abu Dhabi, you can do various sessions, qualifying, practice and all that sort of stuff to reflect the different times that sessions happen in real life as well. The one question that I would raise about that, again it's not really a negative but one thing that maybe we should all think about and maybe that would affect the actual gameplay is that does the different times of the day actually affect the track temperatures? Does it affect the gameplay in any way? Will I get less grip uh, in, the, in the morning? Um, because, I, mean, I think it's called sunrise, uh, would I get less grip at sunrise because the, the track temperatures are lower or will it affect the tyres more or um, that, that perhaps would be something that they've implemented into the game. I don't know if they've announced that. They may have announced that already and I'm speculating for no reason. Uh, but that's, that is a question I would raise about that. Nevertheless, when it comes to the new stuff, the stuff that was literally announced like yesterday, I think it was, as you're watching this, 22 player online lobbies. Now, A, that's going to be absolute cost. B is going to be sick, but C only if B um, only B only applies if the game actually works properly. Now F1 2015 had very dysfunctional online desync lag everywhere. This is a very bold decision from Codemasters to expand online, having had all the issues that they had with F1 2015. Now online is a, is a, is a lot more stable than it was uh, when the game was released, but league racing practically came to a halt on F1 2015 because the connection was so bad with 16 players and Codemasters have raised the bar to a full lobby of 22, um, obviously being the amount of drivers on the grid in real life. Um, it will be absolutely amazing if functional. Um, can Codemasters really support 22 drivers with no lag and desync straight from release date? Hopefully they can, because that would absolutely massively revive league racing, probably back to the F1 2012-2013 days, uh, if they can get that right, but I would be slightly sceptical about that. I am slightly concerned that perhaps they haven't really got the, uh, the connection issues uh, back together. You know, it would be very simple for them really to just say, okay, we're going to stick with 16, uh, we've, we've got connection issues correct now, we've got that, that's absolutely fine, no issues when it comes to connection but they've not just done that they've actually gone overboard and uh, and expanded online as well so hopefully the connection is good but I, you know I wouldn't personally have complained if they'd have left it at 16 as long as I knew they were going to get the connection right um, but to expand it to 22 well, we'll have to see. Props to them if they get it right, though. After that, we've got the addition of the formation lap. Now, it's it's a lovely addition, actually, and uh, it might be quite good for cinematics as well from, from a selfish perspective. Um, nice to get some sort of t uh, heat into the tyres, into the brakes. I assume uh, the amount of weaving and the amount of braking and stuff that you do actually affects perhaps the start that you'll get. Um, so I would imagine it's probably quite an important feature when it comes to the actual race start uh, as well. It's probably not just something that aesthetically looks good but has no real impact on the actual race itself. It could get boring realistically on Championship edi uh, Edition. You know, it does become something that you don't necessarily want to do every single time. 
but the reality is it's something that we've wanted for quite some time and Codemasters have implemented it. So even if it does get boring eventually, you can't knock Codemasters for it because they've listened to the fans. They've listened to what we wanted and they've implemented it. So you can't be negative about that. You can't knock them for it because at least they're listening to us. They're listening to what we want. Same for the safety car. Even if the AI are a bit demented under the safety car, at least they've implemented it back and hopefully they can refine that with updates or whatever. Uh, another thing, manual starts, and this sort of keys in, I guess, with formation laps. Obviously, if you can get the, the a larger amount of heat into the tyres, into the brakes, you're probably going to get a better start, and then better entrance into turn one. Uh, starts, though, are manual this year, so you can jump the start if you go too early and get a five-second penalty, uh, which will be applied to your race time at the end, or you'll get a five second penalty in the pit lane like you see in real life where the engineers have to wait five seconds and then they can start working on your car. Now you can either jump the start or you can also stall on the grid as well. This is crucial. So not only will starts be varied, you can either get a very good start, you can get a very bad start, you can also stall on the grid as well. Now whether the AI can also stall on the grid, whether the AI uh, also have very variable starts as well. That would be nice to know because obviously on F1 2015 the, the AI get very similar starts and have very similar lines down into turn one. Hopefully the AI have very variable starts as well, not just uh, the driver as well. Can't really see a negative here, it should be epic, but the only, as you know, the one negative I would say when it comes to online, offline, I wouldn't say there's any negatives at all, it makes it more challenging, um, but can, A, can it be reverted to automatic for people who aren't as comfortable with manual starts, so offline, can people be like, actually no, I want to do automatic starts, uh, and B, will it actually work properly online, you know, will people actually start correctly at the same time when it comes to manual starts, because obviously if you have the host, uh, starting like three seconds before everyone else. It's, it's not really ideal. Uh, the final thing really then as well when it comes to new features, manual pit entry. Uh, you can get five second penalties again for this if you uh, if you speed in the pit lane. Basically what happens is you have to slow down to the correct speed and then, sp and then click a button and that will be your pit entry. That will be uh, your pit lane limiter, sorry. I don't think the pit stops are manual. I think when you actually get into the pit box, that's automatic. But the actual entry into the pit lane is manual. Once again, is this something that can be switched off for people who are, you know, less comfortable with manual pit stops? Um, it's something that we've waited for for quite some time and I think personally it's going to add a lot to the game because obviously now you can gain some time and lose some time going into the pit lane as well. So personally I think it's a positive. I don't think I can't see anything wrong with it, um, especially with the challenge that it brings when it comes to potentially getting uh, penalties as well and also having to click a button to get the pit lane limiter going. Apart from that though, that is basically it. Now what I've talked about really is I've gone over the new features, gone over the positives and negatives about them. When it comes to gameplay, we, we know the game, I can't really explain why I know the gameplay is going to be good, um, but the gameplay is going to be good, you know, take my word for that, the gameplay is going to be sick, I've seen it, you know, the gameplay is going to be mega, so we don't have to worry about that, it's just really the features that have been implemented. I've not tried to scaremonger you guys into thinking, oh god, this could be a disaster again, I've just tried to be, you know, a realist about this, you know, could this be the best F1 game that we've ever seen? Yes, potentially, if Codemasters get every Every single element that they've introduced into the game right, along with the gameplay which we know they've got right already, this could be the best F1 game ever, not just that they've made, ever, you know, I mean it's it has potential to be fantastic. Career mode looks incredible, they've finally done something with multiplayer a bit better as well, because we haven't really seen a, an actual improvement to multiplayer in quite some time, you know, they've massively improved multiplayer, hopefully, when it comes to connection as well, and just the small things, pit boards, customization, um, the fact that you can, you know, you can edit the date, you know, the time of day that you do a race in, and pit boards, and all that sort of stuff, and the safety car, it, it, it has genuine potential to be good. What I want to know though is what your thoughts are in the comments section and what you think could still be further improved on this game before its release, having seen what has been announced by Codemasters so far. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video though. Feel free to the likes button, subscribe if you are new around here as well and comment about enjoying the video if you enjoyed it that much. Share with your mates as well if you enjoyed that much but it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a good day, enjoy yourselves and goodbye.